Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixin Perfect, and today we're going to create a beautiful wet glass fully loaded with raindrops in front of our subject fairly easily and fast. Guys, it's a game of blend modes and clever masking, and the concept is worth learning no matter what we do in Photoshop. So, without any further ado, let's get started. This video is brought to you by the Pix Imperfect Store. Do you want to make this effect really quick, efficient, and amazing? Check out the awesome action set of the effect with a ton more varieties. These actions work on all images no matter what color, resolution, or type they are. All you need to do is select what you want, click on the play button, and bingo, the action is fully customizable and highly instructional. At every step, it will let you control each value according to your taste and tell you what the value does. Guess what? You can also customize every single thing even after applying the action. Although you don't have to make a purchase to learn this effect, however, it's fast, it gives you a lot of options, and again, it's just $2. So head over to PixImperfectStore.com, get this, and as a bonus, you also get the complete PixImperfect action collection for free. So here we are back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, check the links in the description. First of all, we always start with the concept. If we're going to place our subject behind a glass, some areas of the glass will make the subject blurry, especially if it's a wet glass. So we will make a copy of the background layer. Make sure the background layer is selected and then press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy. Now we can name the copy blurry just for reference. There we go. Let's convert it into a smart object so that we can change the values later. Go to filter, convert for smart filters. Hit OK. Now, as you can see by the symbol, this has been converted into a smart object. Next, we go to filter, blur. Now you can always apply the good old Gaussian blur, but here's the problem. If you apply Gaussian blur, it looks so artificial and computerized. See, it's just, you know, computerized blur doesn't look good for a blur caused by the window. So instead of applying this, let's hit cancel. We will apply something more realistic. Go to filter, blur, and then box blur. Have a look at the difference. See the difference in the blur? It is much more natural when it comes to blurring by the window pane, wet window pane. All right, we can apply something like 36 for your image. It might be different depending upon the resolution. Hit OK. Next, we need to bring in the wet glass texture. Now this is available for you to download. Check the links in the description. So I'm just going to go to my finder, locate it, drag it and drop it over the canvas, right? Now to make it bigger from the center, let's bring it to the center first. Hold the shift and the alt key or the shift and the option key together. And then when you make it bigger, it becomes bigger or smaller from the center. All right, there we go. We are satisfied with this. We will hit enter or return. Now here comes the most important step of this tutorial and many other tutorials, and that is observation. Let's have a look at the texture. Look at the gray areas. Those areas have blurred anything which is beyond the glass and have also made it a little brighter. Look at these areas where the water was in excess. Look at these droplet areas. Those areas are more transparent. So from this, we can infer that we need to make a selection of these gray areas and apply blur to that. And how can we make a selection of all these areas? By using color range. So simply go to select and then color range. Now let's zoom out quite a bit. Let's have a look at the image. Now I've already made a selection of those areas, so this might be confusing. So I'm just gonna go back and refresh or reset that. All right, the first thing that we have to do is to make sure the selection preview is none. Okay, so that you can look at the image. Now, secondly, decrease the fuzziness. And for this image, I'm gonna check localized color clusters. So if I select this color, it won't be selected all over the image because this might be the transparent color in some other area. So for this one, let's make sure we check the localized color clusters. Now, the next thing we do is making sure that the fuzziness is at a very low number. Something like four is fine. Then select the first eyedropper tool. Now start with an area which is completely gray. So I'm gonna start with something like, let's say this area, which you think is closest to the mean of all. Now we select the plus eyedropper tool and we start adding color to it of different grays. Let's start adding this, that, 
All these areas are the areas that we want to blur. Now we have to do it all over the texture because we have selected localized color cluster. So if we select a color there on the right top corner, and if there's the same color on the left bottom corner, it won't be selected, right? Because localized is selected. It gives you much more accuracy. Make sure you pick the colors that you want to remove. You can also choose the sample size a little lower. Let's choose point sample because we don't want to accidentally sample from the transparent areas. Now, once you have done most of that, now it's time for us to change the selection preview to grayscale. Now, as you can see, white are the areas which are selected and black are the areas which are not selected. Then you can just play with the fuzziness. This is the softness and this is the range. So as you can see, the local areas are now selected. You can control the range to make sure, just make sure most of the areas are selected and then control the fuzziness. I guess for this image, make sure it's not frying up. For this image, we're going to go with something like 39 is fine. Hit OK. Now we have a selection as you can see. Now we have to create a placeholder or we can also create a mask. I'm going to show you both the ways, right? So select the background layer, create a layer on top of that. Press D to reset the swatches. Make sure the foreground color is black and then press Alt Backspace or Option Delete. Okay, now as you can see, if I turn these two off and the background off as well, this has been filled in the selected areas with black. Press Ctrl or Command D to deselect that. Now let's turn on the blurry. And what if I want to apply or make the blurry only visible over just these areas? Simply create a clipping mask. Right click on the blurry layer and choose Create Clipping Mask. Now as you can see, the blurry areas are only seen on those areas. Now you can turn the background as you can see. If you zoom in, we are coming close. We are getting close. The other way is, let's go back. Once the selection is active, you can select the blurry layer, click on the mask button. It simply creates a mask. Both are the same thing. You can choose whatever you like. The previous one gives you a little more freedom to kind of play with that layer and apply effects or all other kinds of stuff to that. And mask, you're a little bit more limited, but it's more convenient. So it's absolutely your choice. Okay. The next thing we do, we turn on the wet glass texture and then we change the blend mode of this one to hard light. Now, as you can see, it's looking great, but it's too much, right? So let's go ahead and decrease the opacity a little bit to somewhere around 61. Now, some of you might not like the colors. You can keep it at that. You can have colors, but if you don't like the colors, you can create a hue saturation adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose hue saturation. Now you can take the saturation all the way to the left, but you only wanted to remove the color of the glass, right? So click on this button called create clipping mask button. It will only limit it to the wet glass texture. Have a look at it. It's looking amazing, isn't it? Now what you can do, you can just minimize it, select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. This is just optional. Now you can take the brush with white as the foreground color selected. You can paint on the areas where you don't want the color. So let's decrease the flow to somewhere around 14, 15 ish. For example, we didn't want color over here. You can paint white over there. Maybe you didn't want so much color over here. So much color here. You can control the amount of color very easily, right? You can do all kinds of stuff. For me, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go back and I'll just keep the saturation at somewhere around minus 40 or maybe minus 50, something like that. 38 is fine. I'm just playing. All right. Now we need to brighten this up a bit. This is a dark image, right? For a bright image, you might have to darken it. It's absolutely depending upon the image. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. And then let's brighten it. Take this slider from the left to the right, but it's brightening up everything, right? Again, we need to click on this button called create clipping mask button. It will only limit to that. As you can see how realistic this looks, right? So you can take it up to, let's say this value. And then what we can do, this is amazing. We can take it up to this, select the mask and then press control or command I. Then you can take the brush again, foreground color white, flow at something around 15 is fine. And then whatever area you want to brighten, just paint on that area. See, 
giving it a realistic look. I don't want to brighten that area. Maybe this area a little bit. Okay, now at the end, we want some areas in focus. For example, the lips. We want that area to be sharp. So, we make another copy of the background layer. Let's go down, select the background layer, press Ctrl or Command J. Now, place it beneath the wet glass, just like so. As you can see, everything is in focus right now. It's looking fake. So, hold the Alt or Option, click on the mask button. All right, now you take the brush again. Make sure the flow is a little lower, 5% is fine. Foreground color, white. And then you paint in the areas that you want in focus. For example, the lips. Let's zoom in. And the nose a little bit. Just a touch. Maybe this area a little bit. Maybe this watch a little bit. Right? Things that are in the same focal plane. Alright. There we go. And it looks great. And we are pretty much done. To top it off, we can also apply a lot of effects as well. Personally, I think I will decrease the saturation. Let's go ahead, double click on this one and let's decrease it to minus 100. And let's go ahead and apply a color lookup table. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose color lookup. You can choose whatever you like. There are lots of them to try from. But I'm going to go ahead and choose candlelight. This is exciting, very exciting. Keep the opacity at somewhere around 90 and we are ready to roll. And that's how we do it. Always keep in mind, just as a quick recap, the concept. We always edit by the concept. We looked at the glass, looked at the areas which makes things blurry and lighter. And then we blurred those areas and made it lighter by using curves. As you can see right here. We can also do a little experiment here as well by adding a curves adjustment layer just for the blurry. So let's add a curves adjustment layer, clip it to the blurry and maybe we will brighten it just a little bit. It makes it much more realistic. So always go by the concept. Just a little summary. First of all, we made a copy of the background layer, as you can see, and then we applied box blur. It gives you a much more natural blur than Gaussian blur when it comes to blurs like this. Now, we opened the texture. We looked at those areas which blur stuff. We selected those areas by using selective color and created a mask here. You can also create a placeholder. And then we knew that it brightens stuff. So we added a curves adjustment layer right now and brightened those areas. And then we added the texture and changed the blend mode to hard light, adjusted the opacity to our liking. Now the texture is something that we need to adjust. It was too colorful. So we added a hue saturation adjustment layer, decreased the saturation. You can control it your way. It's absolutely upon you. And then we also brightened it using curves. Now, Here's an essential thing we did. Some of the areas we wanted to be in focus. So we made a copy of the background, as you can see background copy, and made it visible in only certain areas by using a mask. And at the end to top it off, we applied a color lookup table. So that's pretty much how to create the wet glass effect in Photoshop. Always keep in mind the concepts and you'll be good. Hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. I would like to take this moment and thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next fun tour. And stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.